It's been about three years since I started managing my entire smart home using Home Assistant. If you don't know what it is, Home Assistant is an open source home automation platform. One of the first decisions that I had to make was how to install Home Assistant on some device. And at the time, all of the options, well, they sounded a little complicated. And now there are even more options to choose from. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I first set up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and why I then migrated to a mini PC. I'll also show you exactly how to do it, including all the stuff not covered in the official documentation. And at the end, I'll go over some troubleshooting tips in case you get stuck. Everything that I cover will also be included in an article on my website in case that makes it easier to follow along. You can find a link for it in the video description. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. Today, the most plug and play way to get started would be to get Home Assistant green. But this didn't exist when I moved over to Home Assistant. And at the time, the easiest installation method was a DIY approach using a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a tiny, low-cost computer and one of the most popular ways to run Home Assistant. I did some research and purchased a Kana Kit Raspberry Pi 4 Starter Max Kit for $125. The price has since gone up about $20 since I purchased it. It had four gigabytes of RAM and a 64 gigabyte SD card for storage. And it's a great little device that's more than capable of running Home Assistant. But the deeper I got sucked into the Home Assistant vortex, the more I found myself opting for more complex DIY approaches. Let me know in the comments if that sounds like you. For me, it's about the fun of learning a new skill and the utility of opening up new possibilities that I could not do otherwise. The Raspberry Pi 4 is perfectly suited to run Home Assistant, but if you want to explore the world of self-hosting with a hypervisor like Proxmox, or open source NVRs for smart home cameras such as Frigate or Scripted, or media software like Plex or Jellyfin, you're gonna want some more capable hardware. You can also install Home Assistant bare metal on an Intel NUC or mini PC, also referred to as an x86-64 machine, without the need for setting up virtual environments. This is what I've done for now, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Installing Home Assistant alone on an x86 machine may be considered overkill, but it does result in some nice speed improvements over a Raspberry Pi. But just how much faster? Well, that depends on your exact hardware, which brings me to which mini PC to get and the machine that I decided to go with. The Intel NUC is the classic option in the category of x86 machines, but the Intel NUC was at least a couple hundred dollars for a used one. Alternatively, I looked at a used thin client like the Dell Wise 5070 for less than 50 bucks, but I would have had to buy and install additional memory and storage. I also seriously considered a used Dell Optiplex, which was around $150. eBay is a helpful place to search for a used mini PC, and honestly, any of these options would have been fine but I decided to go with a new B-Link S12 Pro for $159 on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it in the video description. At essentially the same cost as a Raspberry Pi 4, I was getting a far more capable machine. The B-Link S12 Pro has a 12th gen Intel Alder Lake N100 processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and 500 gigabytes M.2 SSD, both of which are upgradable. It also has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Even though the B-Link S12 Pro has much greater performance than a Raspberry Pi 4, it is still efficient with an idle power consumption of about five to six watts, which is not too much more than a Raspberry Pi 4. If you're shopping for a mini PC, you'll wanna consider how much power it will draw if it's gonna be on 24 seven. 
The B-Link also has four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports supporting 10 gigabit per second speeds, two HDMI 2.0 ports with support for dual 4K displays, gigabit ethernet, and an audio jack. It comes with a power cable, a couple HDMI cables, and a bracket and screws for mounting on the back of a monitor. So yeah, probably overkill for just running Home Assistant, but if nothing else, I'm already enjoying the speed improvements. I had heard people talk about a mini PC being faster, but what did this even mean? Well, I'll tell you, and I'll put the specs of each machine up on the screen for reference. Let's look at a few tasks that you frequently might do in Home Assistant. It took me about 10 minutes to update Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi, but just one minute on the mini PC. It would take about two minutes to restart Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, but just 30 seconds on the mini PC. Additionally, opening Studio Code Server and validating devices in ESP Home are nearly instantaneous on the mini PC. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it right now, starting with what you'll need. First, you'll need your everyday computer, whatever laptop or PC you typically use for work or personal computer stuff. You'll use this to download the necessary software and applications. Second, you'll need an x86 machine. This is a device that will run the Home Assistant Operating System, or OS. In my case, it's the B-Link S12 Pro. Third, you'll need a wired keyboard and mouse, or at least ones with a USB receiver, not Bluetooth. Home Assistant is meant to run headless, meaning it doesn't require a keyboard, mouse, or monitor to run. However, I don't see how you would complete installation on an x86 machine without one. Fourth, you'll need a computer monitor and a monitor cable. If you purchase the B-Link using the link in the description, it comes with an HDMI cable to connect to a display. Again, this is only for the installation and not for the ongoing use of Home Assistant. For that reason, I suggest using any keyboard, mouse, or monitor that you already have laying around at home. Fifth, you'll need an ethernet cable. The B-Link supports Wi-Fi, but you'll want ethernet both for the installation and the ongoing usage. Sixth, you'll need an eight gigabyte or larger USB stick or drive. And seventh, you'll need a backup of your Home Assistant. However, this is only needed if you are an existing Home Assistant user who is migrating Home Assistant from one device to a mini PC. You can create a backup of an existing Home Assistant by going to Settings, System, Backups, click Create Backup, give your backup a name, choose Full Backup, and click Create. This will create a backup file, which I'll show you how to use later in this video. All right, time to set this thing up. There are two high-level steps to complete. The first is configuring the x86 machine to use UEFI boot mode, and then writing the Home Assistant operating system disk image to the boot medium. Booting Home Assistant OS requires the machine's BIOS to have UEFI boot mode enabled and secure boot disabled. My B-Link S12 Pro was configured this way from the start, but yours may not be. To enter the BIOS, power on your x86 machine and then press the delete key repeatedly. However, the delete key is specific to entering the BIOS on a B-Link. If you have a different machine, just do a Google search for what key to press to enter BIOS. Once in the BIOS, use the keyboard's arrow keys to navigate the settings and ensure UEFI boot mode is enabled and secure boot is disabled. Save any changes and then exit. Now it's time to write the Home Assistant OS image to the boot medium. This is the medium the x86 machine will boot from when running Home Assistant. The medium is typically the hard disk or SSD of the machine. In my case, it was the M.2 SSD. There are a couple ways to write the Home Assistant OS image to the boot medium. I'm gonna focus on the way that I did it, which is also the recommended way. I'm going to boot Ubuntu from a USB drive and install the Home Assistant OS from there. Ubuntu is an open source operating system on Linux. Just know that this process will erase all data, including any previously installed operating system on your x86 machine. Writing the Home Assistant OS to my B-Link S12 Pro erased the Windows 11 that came pre-installed, but 
that wasn't a concern for me. It's now time to create a bootable USB stick using the Ubuntu operating system. Visit the Ubuntu website on your everyday computer, not your x86 machine, and download Ubuntu Desktop, which is about six gigabytes in size. While that's downloading, visit the Etcher website to download Belena Etcher on your everyday computer, which is a free open source application for flashing OS images to SD cards and USB drives. Open Belena Etcher, select the ubuntu.iso file you downloaded, then select the USB stick where you'll flash it, and then click flash. This failed the first time I tried to do it, and I'll share my troubleshooting tips later in the video. But once it flashes successfully, take that USB stick out of your everyday computer and insert it into the x86 machine where you'll be installing Home Assistant. Power on that machine. If it does not boot into Ubuntu, you may need to adjust the boot order by pressing a certain key such as F10 to select a USB flash drive as the boot device. None of this worked for me though, which I'll explain later in the troubleshooting section of this video. When prompted, select Try Ubuntu. This will run Ubuntu on the USB stick. Just remember to select Try Ubuntu and not Install Ubuntu. Once Ubuntu is up and running on your x86 machine, open a browser on that device. Firefox came pre-installed, so that's what I used. Visit the link to download the Home Assistant OS image, which you can find in the video description. Then, select Show Applications in the bottom left-hand corner of Ubuntu. In Applications, search for and open Disks. On the left-hand side, select the internal disk where you will be installing the Home Assistant OS. Then, select the three dots at the top and click on Restore Disk Image. Select the Home Assistant OS image that you just downloaded and click Start Restoring and then Restore. You'll see a progress bar with the restore operation in progress. Once installed, power off the x86 machine and remove the USB stick. To start up Home Assistant, make sure the machine is plugged into Ethernet. If you are migrating from a previous installation of Home Assistant, plug in any Z-Wave or Zigbee coordinators to the machine's USB ports. Then, you can power on the machine. If the x86 is still plugged into a monitor, you should see the Home Assistant welcome banner, but a keyboard, mouse, and monitor are no longer necessary for your mini PC that is now running Home Assistant. At this point, you can hop back on your everyday computer to access and configure Home Assistant. From that everyday computer, you'll visit the address shown here on the screen from a browser. Here, you have two options. Set up as a brand new instance of Home Assistant or Restore from a backup if you're like me and migrating an existing Home Assistant from one computer to another. I will focus on how to restore from a backup. Click Restore from Backup, then Upload Backup. Select the backup file which I showed you how to create earlier. Then choose Full Backup and Restore. This may take up to 45 minutes to complete. Once completed, you'll be presented with the Home Assistant login page. Sign in using the same credentials as the Home Assistant on your previous machine where you created the backup. Once logged in, you should see the same Home Assistant dashboard that you were using previously and everything should be good to go. Well, mostly. Let's talk about some of the challenges that I faced and the troubleshooting that I did in order to resolve every single one. Issue number one writing the ubuntu.iso file to my USB stick using Belena Etcher on macOS failed about halfway through. Once it failed, the USB stick could not be seen or accessed on my Mac. I tried on Windows, but it said the USB must be formatted, but I couldn't format the USB stick because write protection was enabled and none of the workarounds that you would typically use in this situation worked. So I grabbed an old one terabyte external drive that I had laying around I went through the Belena Etcher steps again and it worked. I did get a warning though asking if I really wanted to install it on such a large drive since it would erase all the content. Issue number two. My x86 machine, the B-Link S12 Pro, would not boot into bootloader. It turns out that, at least on this particular device, 
I had to finish installing Windows first. Once Windows was installed, I had to go to Settings, Security, and click on Advanced Restart. Issue number three. Well, I could not actually finish installing Windows, at least at first. This part kind of confused me for a bit. I navigated through the BIOS earlier on and the initial phases of Windows installation all just by using the keyboard. But then I got to one particular screen in the Windows installation and it wouldn't respond to anything I did on the keyboard and powering off and on the machine didn't help. For whatever reason, that one particular screen could only be navigated with a mouse, but I hadn't been using one. I plugged in a USB mouse and was able to click and move past that screen, complete the Windows installation, and then select Advanced Restart to boot up from the USB stick. Issue number four. It's hard to say how long it actually takes to restore Home Assistant from a backup. During the restore process, you just see a screen indicating that a restore is in progress. To check if the restore is actually completed, you need to refresh that page periodically. You'll know when it's done because you'll see the Home Assistant login. Issue number five. Once I had everything installed and Home Assistant started on my new mini PC, there were two things that did not work. First, the Sonos integration was presenting an error and all of my Sonos speakers were unavailable. This was because the B-Link S12 Pro had a different IP address than the Raspberry Pi. I'm using Unify for my networking equipment and I was able to fix this in the Unify controller. To do so, I had to uncheck used fix IP address on the Raspberry Pi, then copy its IP address and set it as a fixed IP address on the B-Link. Then I restarted the Unify controller and the B-Link for the fixed IP address to take effect. The second thing not working when I started up Home Assistant on the mini PC was backups. I had to re-add my Synology NAS by going to Settings, System, Storage, Add Network Storage. From there, I could give it a name, set it as my backup, add the IP address of my NAS, select the Samba Windows protocol, add the path to the remote share, enter the login credential for my NAS, and click Connect. To confirm it was set as my default backup location, I went to Settings, System, Backups, click the three dots in the upper right, select Change Default Backup Location, and confirm my NAS was selected. It does take a bit of work to get set up, but it's certainly doable. I'm enjoying the performance improvements since migrating my home assistant from a Raspberry Pi 4 to the B-Link S12 Pro mini PC. I'm also excited about the things I might do in the future with this additional performance, such as taking advantage of virtual environments. Let me know in the comments what hardware you're using to run Home Assistant and anything that you would do differently. If you're interested in how to set up Home Assistant remote access using a Cloudflare tunnel, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. When I told you I was thinking about moving away from the Raspberry Pi, what did you say? Yes, I moved Home Assistant from Raspberry Pi to Keyline Pi. That is officially the new name of our mini PC.